In this particular lecture, we will see how to define this and you know, how do we evaluate or determine the VOH value or the VOL value uh, or the, uh, you know, the VIL and VIH values from the, uh, the inverter's uh, transfer characteristics. Right, so uh, let me pick up a pointer so that it will be uh, easier for me to explain. Uh, so let me choose a color, <coughs> excuse me. So we know that these two points, you know, the points, uh, you know, we had said this is the point B and this is the point A. And we know that the B point is on that particular, uh, you know, it is one of those intersection points, which is coming from, uh, you know, this is the transfer characteristics. And the B point is in the transfer characteristics, which is coming from the IV characteristics, uh, the IV characteristics of the NMOS and PMOS. And, uh, you know, this particular region, what I have mentioned here is the PMOS uh, is in linear and NMOS in the saturation. So it is kind of the B point is actually closer to the, uh, uh, you know, to the zero volts. So it is that point where the NMOS is in saturation and then the PMOS is in linear. Similarly, this is a point A, uh, and then this point A lies in that particular region where the, uh, uh, you know, the, P, uh, the PMOS is in saturation and NMOS is in linear, right? So again, uh, so the B point, sorry, this B point is actually, you know, this particular region uh, turns out to be uh, closer to the VDD volts, and then this particular region turns out to be closer to the zero volts. Right, and then uh, the, the regions are specified, the transistors operating region are specified, NMOS being in saturation and PMOS being in linear. In this particular case, the PMOS is in saturation and NMOS is in linear. Right, so I've drawn this particular IV characteristics just for the reference. So in our, uh, you know, in the previous to previous lectures, what we had seen was the IV characteristics uh, where, uh, you know, I let, let me draw that somewhere. Uh, so I'm drawing a very small profile. So the IV characteristics we had drawn so uh, where V was nothing but V out characteristics, right? And then we had drawn uh, one characteristics for uh, in MOS. Uh, so let me pick a different color and say that this is for in MOS for input voltage of one volts. And then similarly, we had drawn one more, uh, you know, uh, in MOS for uh, V input voltage of two volts and then so on, right? And let me pick up uh, one more pointer. Uh, let me see. Uh, and then say that uh, for the, the PMOS, uh, you know, we had, uh, um, so, so this one particular profile for the PMOS and then uh, similarly for V input of one volt, we had uh, something uh, going forward like this. And this being our intersection point, right? Uh, the PMOS being the linear and the NMOS being the saturation, right? Uh, PMOS being the linear and NMOS being the saturation, which will give me the points around this particular region up till the point B, right? So if I want to choose a point B, it will that part, it will be this particular equation of the current of NMOS in saturation should be equal to that of the PMOS current in linear. So I have to equate that and eventually for the point B, I know that the slope is actually minus one. Right, so I will have two equations, uh, slope being minus one, that is the differential of V out with respect to uh, V input is minus one, that is one equation. The second equation is the current being the same. So putting both of them, I should be able to find out what should be the solution, what should be the point B in terms of V out and V in. Right, so, so similarly point A, it is, you know, uh, somewhere here it will fall, uh, somewhere closer to the, uh, you know, the output voltage being zero volts. So that is what I've drawn here, the I, IDS versus the VDS or the V out uh, profile. And I've drawn one uh, NMOS profile, uh, NMOS current profile, and then I've drawn uh, a PMOS current profile. And I've stated that this V input and then this V input is nothing but uh, the VIH value, All right? And that for that particular VIH value, whatever is the point here, VIH value, so this is the VIH value, I'll get this particular point A. Right, so what we have done previously was we have taken V input value as one volts, two volts, three volts, four volts, five volts. And then similarly for NMOS and PMOS, we have drawn the current profile and wherever it was intersecting, we, we used to get those intersection points, mapped it into the transfer characteristics. But here I want a point A and point B. Right, so for the point A, I will equate uh, the current equations. I'll equate the, for this particular point A, I will equate this current equations of the PMOS uh, being in saturation and current equations of NMOS being in linear. 
and then apply one more uh, you know one more parameter of slope being one so that I should be able to find out what is VIH and what is uh, VOL. Okay, so I'll get uh, the, the point of uh, input and output voltage for the point A. Uh, and I have drawn this particular uh, current and voltage characteristics just to say that if V input is VIH, you know, and if I draw the PMOS current profile and NMOS current profile, the intersection point is nothing but the point A. Right, hope uh, this is uh, understandable. So moving forward, what we want is, uh, I mean, we want to find out this point A, that means we want to find, identify what is uh, VIH and VOL. So that's what we want. So I'm going to equate the currents, I'm going to equate the saturation PMOS current and I'm going to, you know, saturation uh, PMOS current equated to the NMOS linear current. Right, so the saturation PMOS current, uh, so this is the saturation PMOS current and then equate it to NMOS linear current to find out the VIH and uh, VOL. Right, so the equations of the PMOS with respect to the uh, PMOS and NMOS in saturation and linear region respectively, in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of the inverter characteristics, uh, I will get uh, this particular saturation current as beta PMOS by two into the input is, uh, you know, VGS is nothing but, uh, for the PMOS it is V in minus VDD, minus VTP it will be nothing but, uh, you know, plus of uh, 0.3 here. And VDD is nothing but taken as uh, 1 volts. Uh, and uh, is equal to the beta N, the NMOS linear expression is nothing but beta N into VGS minus uh, VDS by 2 multiplied by VDS. VGS uh, is nothing but V input for the NMOS. Uh, because the source is anyways grounded uh, and then we have the VT which is nothing but uh, plus of 0.3 and V out or rather you know VDS is nothing but V out by 2 uh, and source is anyways grounded and then the VDS turns out to be V out for the NMOS. So putting all these equations what we eventually have you know if, if I look into this particular expression I will have a function I mean I will have an expression of V in and then of course there will be a square and then uh, this particular on the right hand side, I will have V in and then V out uh, multiplied by V out. So in fact, what we can get is uh, we can get a V input uh, in as a function of V output or V output as a function of V input, right? Uh, our second equation is nothing but the slope. So if I do dV out by dV in, you know, this is what our second equation is. So it will be nice to get the output you know, from this, uh, you know, the V out as a function of V in, and then I, I should be able to do the differentiation with respect to V in. And then equate it to minus one, right? So continuing further, so I will have this uh, quadratic equation of, uh, you know, the, the square uh, equation of V in minus uh, 0.7, the whole square, and then this one uh, coming from here. And if I, uh, you know, um, uh, solve this, if I evaluate it further, I should be able to find out uh, the quadratic equation solutions for V out. So I'm going to trying to express V out in terms of V input. So previously, uh, what I've done is I've taken, uh, express this into the, uh, the quadratic uh, equation where V out square and V out are uh, multiplied by this particular expression plus uh, V in minus 0.7 the whole square, right? So I want to express now V out as a solution, you know, uh, in terms of V in. So uh, using the quadratic expressions a, b and c, uh, the b square minus 4ac will give me uh, this particular expression and uh, so finally it will, uh, you know, to simplify b square minus 4ac it turns out to be this one, 1 1.6 into uh, 2 into v in minus 1 and v out as a solution is nothing but we know that it is uh, minus of uh, uh, minus of b plus minus uh, square root of b square minus 4ac by divided by 2 into a where a is nothing but 1. Uh, so in this case, the quadratic equation, uh, we have the a is equal to 1 uh, coming from you know, this particular equation in the previous slide. So a is 1, uh, b is uh, this particular value and c is this particular value. Right? Uh, so b is that particular, no, minus of that particular value. So a is 1, so I will get in the denominator, it is nothing but 2 multiplied by 1 and uh, minus of uh, b, uh, is what I'm getting here, uh, 2 into V in, uh, and then uh, 2 into V in minus of 0.6. Uh, so let me go back to that previous uh, slide. So this is what uh, the B is, uh, uh, 
so b turns out to be uh, uh, 0.6 uh, minus 2v in uh, so if i go back uh, or rather you know progress further so this will be uh, the b value so this is what i've gotten here and uh, we have anyways uh, resolved this b square minus 4ac so it turns out to be a 1.6 uh, square root of 1.6 uh, multiplied by uh, uh, 2 v in minus 1. So finally v out is nothing but v in minus of 0.3 minus of uh, square root of 0.4 into 2 into v in minus 1. So again I think uh, you know there are two equations here because uh, v out is uh, you know plus and minus or plus and minus so that's what uh, we have taken here plus and minus and I have taken the minus uh, solution here because the plus solution turns out to be way uh, way way higher than the 1 volts which we cannot have v out should always be in between uh, 0 and 1 volts so that's why the another solution of which is nothing but the minus solution works out uh, well so this becomes our expression now uh, so this is one uh, one equation the second equation we know that it is nothing but uh, dv out by dv in uh, should be minus 1 so as to get the point a so dv out by dv in uh, at point a uh, that's what i've written is equal to minus 1 defines uh, the vih and voh so uh, look you know whatever the equation 1 we have got and if i do the differentiation on top of it uh, and i will get uh, you know if i go back to the slide number 9 so if i do a differentiation uh, with respect to v in it this will be nothing but 1 uh, this is anyways a constant value so it will be 0 and if i do a differentiation so it will be nothing but 1 by uh, in the denominator i'll get a 2 and then the square root of this and then multiplied by 2 into 0.4 so that's what uh, I, I get it here if I do a differentiation and then further uh, solving this uh, uh, and then putting it into uh, minus 1 I should be able to get the V input as nothing but 0.55 volts uh, where we have taken VT value of uh, 0.3 and VDD as 1 volts and it is a skewed inverter that means the beta P is equal to beta N. So that is something uh, you know we have taken that uh, the current equations when we are equating uh, in slide number 8 so this beta n and then this beta p are equal all right so uh, going going uh, proceeding further so we get v input is equal to 0.55 volts that means that is at point a i'm getting the v input as 0.55 volts so this v hi h the input at point a is 0.55 volts that means v i h is uh, 0.55 volts right uh, the other counterpart on the output side is VOL here. So if I put this particular VI, uh, V input of 0.55 volts in our equation 1, you know, where we had expressed V out in terms of, you know, V out was a function of uh, V input. So if I put this particular 0.55 volts there, I should be able to get what is the VO, uh, V output. That means it is, it will give me the VOL value. So that's what I have done here. So putting this, uh, 0.55 volts in uh, in our expression of v out in terms of uh, v in i will get uh, vol uh, to be 0 0.05 volts and vih anyways is 0.55 volts right so i've got the point a uh, which is nothing but uh, 0 0.05 and 0 0.55 volts so this is nothing but the point a and similarly we should be able to find out the point b which will be nothing but uh, you know uh, uh, VOH and uh, VIL uh, right if I equate uh, you know this point B if I I should be able to find it out you know the VOH and VIL as 0 0.95 and 0 0.45 volts uh, using the similar values of VDD and VD, VT by equating uh, the other region by equating the other region in a sense by equating the other regions of the transfer characteristics looking at the transfer characteristics on the other side above the uh, you know point b it is nothing but the current uh, of you know saturation current of the nmos should be equal to the pmos linear current and if i equate this and then additionally put the slope to be minus 1 i should be able to find out the point b it turns out to be 0.95 and uh, 0.45 volts Right, so if you if we look closely into this particular expression, right? Uh, um, so 0.95. So if I draw this uh, uh, the out input output region, uh, and let me pick the VDD line. So this is my VDD line, and this is my ground line. 
right? And uh, let me pick another color and say that this is uh, 0.95 uh, line and this is 0 0.05 line on the output side, uh, 0.95 volts, right? And then we have uh, VDD by 2 and then we have uh, these two lines which is I think but 0.55 on the input side and 0.45 on the input side, right? So for a skewed inverter, everything looks very, very symmetric. Symmetric in the sense the output line is uh, point, uh, you know, output high is 0 0.95. So it's symmetrical point uh, uh, on the lower side will be 0 0.05 volts. And similarly on the input side, uh, you know, if one point is 0 0.055 volts, it is symmetrically, symmetrical point on the lower side will be 0 0.045 volts. So the skewed uh, or the unskewed inverters, the noise margin uh, input output uh, levels looks very very symmetric right whereas for a uh, skewed inverter now this may not be uh, symmetric so it will change so this particular value even if it is an high skewed inverter we had seen in the previous uh, case this positions uh, will will be of higher level so even the threshold voltage vdd by 2 will go higher so all the uh, both these points will be moving uh, will be offset at, at a higher value, right? Uh, the change in the VOH and v, uh, VOL value, so this VOL and then the VOH value uh, for a skewed inverter, so I'm putting a dash there, uh, may not be much, but the change in the VIL and the VIH value uh, will be much, right? Uh, you, you will actually see that uh, the offset value, whereas the VOH and then the VOL value may, may not be so much of a change. 